me, Christmas time is awesome. I think for all of us, Christmas is just great. And so, one of the biggest things that happens at Christmas, obviously, is the giving of gifts. And I love... And receiving of gifts. And I love receiving gifts. Receiving gifts is great, obviously. Uh, and, and for me, like, I really personally like practical gifts. Ones that you can use every day that change your life for a long time. Like socks. Like how awesome are socks? You know, you just slide on those new socks. Especially if they're like $12 hiking socks. Oh man, they just feel so good. And so, I like receiving gifts. But better than receiving gifts is, I think, is giving gifts. Like, giving gifts is different than receiving, right? And, and I think um, it's even better when you're given a gift if somebody else knows about it as well at the same time. So, so like, uh, I got some gifts under the tree right now at home, um, and I had the kids help me wrap them. So my kids know what mom's getting, Sarisa. They know what she's getting tomorrow morning. And it's kind of neat that I can invite them in on that, and it kind of builds the suspense and the excitement. Right, so if it was just me that knew the gift that I was presenting that was going to that she's going to open tomorrow morning, that's fine. It's still exciting and great, but it's even cooler when you can kind of invite somebody in. They get excited about it with you, um, and so I think for all of us, um, you you could agree with me. And but if you don't quite agree that giving is better and it feels better, you still like receiving better. It's probably one of two things: um, either you're too young. Or, got a slide there, either you're too young or you don't love anyone as much as you love yourself. So if, if you're not at that place yet where you love giving and giving to people and seeing their face light up on Christmas morning because of what you've given and how it's changed them, um, yeah, one of those two reasons, likely. But what I want to do right now is while you're sitting there, I want you to think of the perfect gift. If you were to give somebody the perfect gift, what would that be? And while you're thinking of that perfect gift, keep these three things in mind, okay? Keep presentation in mind, the price, and the impact. Because these three things are all included in giving a gift to somebody. So the presentation. The presentation is, is how are, how are you going to present this to the person you love. This is a big deal because the presentation is what builds the suspense for the giver. That's you. But it also builds into the surprise of the receiver. Right? Like if, however you're presenting it to them, when they pop that thing open, it's going to build into the surprise, the presentation. And so you want to present it in such a way that when they open it, they're gonna, their breath's going to be taken away. If this is the perfect gift, it should take their breath away. Right? Okay. The price. The price is important because if you're giving something to somebody, it's going to cost you something. Right? And so if it's the perfect gift, obviously it's going to cost you a lot. Now just say that money was not an option, like money was not an issue. What would you buy for somebody? What would you get them if money was not an issue? That could be the perfect gift. And then the impact, of course, is everything at the end of the day. The impact... That, that the gift has on somebody's life is huge. And so is it, go, is it going to be something that you give to them that impacts them just once, right then and there? It's just like a one-time experience? I think the perfect gift would impact somebody in such a way that would be daily, ongoing, and you're going to completely change their lives. You're going to bring an extreme amount of joy, happiness, comfort, peace, hope, love, excitement into their life. And it's, it's not just you giving the perfect gift, but what makes it even more perfect in the impact is when that, that person that opens that thing, if it hits them so heavy that w- they think, there's no way on God's green earth I could get this on my own. I couldn't get this gift on my own. I couldn't buy it. I couldn't work for it. I couldn't earn it. Thank you that you were able to buy it and earn it for me and give it to me. That would make the impact huge. Now, talking about the perfect gift, um, I would be really surprised if anybody here thought of anything. I mean, even if you did, that, I mean, that's pretty cool, but if you think about it, it's impossible to give a perfect gift because there's nothing perfect in this world. 
So there's, it's impossible to give a perfect gift. And the reason why there's nothing perfect in this world is because we live in a Genesis 3 world. A Genesis 3 world means that everything was perfect and then one day everything was not perfect anymore. Right? So what happens in Genesis 3 in the Bible is... God creates everything. He creates all the animals. He creates the sky and the land. He creates the planet. He creates the universe and all the stars. And he creates man and woman in his image and likeness. And he says that it is good. It is all very good. For two chapters. <laughs> and then chapter 3 comes. And everything's not so good anymore. So Adam and Eve are God's children. And one thing I know about children, they disobey. I know that to be true about children. I was one at one time. Maybe you haven't. I'm not sure. But maybe. Adam and Eve chose to disobey God, their father. And so what they did, God placed two trees in the middle of the garden where they were living and it was perfect. The tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And they went and ate from that tree that God told them not to eat of. They disobeyed God. And Eve was deceived by God's enemy. And at that moment, do you know what happened? At that moment, Sin entered into the world. And what came shortly after sin? Death. The price for sin is death. And so death had to come in. And at that moment, everything become unperfect at that moment. And so Adam and Eve, they were cast out of the garden by God in, in discipline. And everything was marred, and it's really tragic. I mean, it's, it's brutal that that had to happen. And so all of our lives have been impacted by that one decision that Adam and Eve made. Now, but in that, in all of that discipline that's happening and, and putting them out and, and death being the penalty for sin and all that kind of stuff, it sounds crazy, God makes a promise. God makes a promise. Genesis 3.15. Everybody says that John 3.16 is the greatest verse in the Bible. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, so that whoever should believe in Him would have everlasting life. Genesis 3.15 is as equally awesome because God makes His first promise in this nightmare of a situation. And this is the promise here. I will put enmity between you and the woman. He's talking to the enemy. And between your offspring and her offspring, he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Now, if, if I had a different translation up there like the NIV, which is the Bible in the seat in front of you, it would say, he will crush your head and you will bruise his heel. Um, I've had a bruised heel before. Anybody here ever had a bruised heel? kind of sucks. Like, it lasts for weeks, depending on how bad it is, and it feels like the bone's bruised, and every step you take, you know it's there. It's not a good feeling. Have any of you ever had a crushed head? <laughs> Me neither. I don't know what that feels like, but it ain't good. Okay, so God makes a promise right in this first sin that Adam and Eve brought into the world. So, this promise is huge. And the reason, and you may be kind of thinking, Christmas Eve, why are we talking about this stuff? Well, we wouldn't be here tonight celebrating Christmas if Adam and Eve never rebelled. There's no need for it. There's no need for Christmas if Adam and Eve never rebelled. So that's why we're talking about Genesis and how we live in a Genesis 3 world. So, this promise God fulfills later in a gift, the perfect gift. This promise that God gave back then, he was going to fulfill when he gave the world the perfect gift. And so what is that perfect gift? What is it? And has he even given it to us yet? Let's open to Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. If you don't have a Bible, there's one in front of you in the seat. If you don't own one and you'd like to take one home, grab that. Take that home. That's our gift to you. Um, and also, it'll be up on the screen behind me. Okay. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. 
The birth of Jesus Christ. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. Okay, we're going to stop there because that's kind of a spoiler alert. I was just kind of like, um, is God going to give us the gift? What is the gift? Has he done it yet? Well, now we're talking about Jesus' birth. So, spoiler alert, sorry. Um, it has to do with Jesus, yep. Obviously, Christmas Eve. <laughs> okay, so we're going to carry on. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and willing to put her and not willing to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, okay, we're going to stop there. As he considered these things, now how many of you have seen a movie before where? Um, where you're watching the character over here and there's also a character over here maybe in like a different setting or something and you're kind of watching both lives at the same time and you know exactly what's going on but the characters don't. It's called dramatic irony. When the reader or the watcher understands what's going on in the plot and knows how it's going to end and finish but the person in the movie has no idea. It's dramatic irony. Like cheesy movies, cheesy love stories are filled with this all over the place. You're watching and you're sitting on the edge of your seat and something's happening. And, uh, and the girl, you know, she's, she's running away and you're like, no, stop, he's right behind you. Or something like that. Or, um, or, you know, the, the, the dude's sitting there and he's all depressed and, and he's leaving. And you're like, no, she just hopped on a plane. She's coming to see you and she loves you. Right? Like that's dramatic irony. And so that's what's going on here. Because Joseph has no idea what God's doing. He has no idea. But we do. We just read it. Mary's, Mary's pregnant by the Holy Spirit. So when, when Mary comes up to Joseph and is like, Joseph, no, 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 I'm still a virgin. I'm pregnant by the Holy Spirit. He's like, mm, he either thinks she's a liar or she needs to be wrapped in a straight jacket and thrown in a padded cell. One of the two. He's not buying it. So he's considering, he's sitting here, considering these things, wondering what he should do, and really has no idea what he should do, and has no idea what he wants to do. So God comes and delivers him a message. So let's see what that message is. Keep reading. Behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So in this moment, God invites Joseph in. He invites Joseph in to this perfect gift and how it's going to be presented. And, he may, and God makes it really clear to Joseph and all of us that this gift is only from him. This gift comes from God and God alone. The virgin. The virgin birth. It came from him and him alone. So Jesus is not something made up and planned by man. And Jesus is not a man that becomes God like some myths say. He's not a legendary awesome man that's a great teacher and all that kind of stuff that becomes a God. No, Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. God become man. The second person in the Trinity. We believe in a triune God that is three people making one God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Together they make one God. And so the second person in the Trinity of God came down and dwelt among men and was born from a virgin, Jesus Christ. And it says, right after that, it says, All of this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall, con shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. So this is huge. This is huge. God coming down. God coming down in the flesh, born from a virgin. And he will save... His people from their sins. He will save His people from their sins. This is Jesus. This is what He's going to do. This is the perfect gift. And this perfect gift is presented in Jesus Christ. 
This perfect gift is paid for by Jesus Christ, and this perfect gift will have a huge impact on all generations for all eternity in heaven and on earth forever and ever. No other gift has this type of impact. Romans um, 6.23 says this, it tells us that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So the perfect gift from God, the perfect gift is eternal life, presented in Jesus, paid for by Jesus, and impacts the life and gives us life to the full. That's what the perfect gift is. And so, so all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and all of us are His children that He is giving this gift to. This is a gift that you cannot purchase, you cannot own, earn, you cannot obtain, you cannot work towards, you cannot pay for on your own. It needs to be gifted to you by God through Jesus, paid by Jesus, and it will completely change your entire life every single day for all eternity. That is the perfect gift. And the, and the impact that this gift can have on your life is paramount. It can impact your life, it will impact your life in three ways. He frees you from the penalty of sin, He frees you from the power of sin, and He frees you from the presence of sin. This is the impact. He frees you from the, the penalty. You no longer have to die. Christ died for you. So you are saved from death to life. If you're being saved from something, you need to be saved to something as well. You're saved from death to life. That's the penalty that you're saved from. You're saved from the power. You no longer have to live in this world and, and have temptations come into your life and you just cower and crumble right off the bat. You don't need to have fear come into your life because you have the power of God inside of you that can bring peace that passes all understanding and you can live your life with joy and happiness and not, not ride the roller coaster of emotions depending on your circumstance. He saves you from the power of sin in your life so you can defeat temptations and, and sin. And also the presence. This is the eternal life part. Right now, there's no way that you can get away from sin. Everything's imperfect. It's all around us. The whole world's affected by it. The only way that you can ever be freed from the presence of that is in heaven. So God will save us from the presence of all sin. He will wipe every tear. He will, he will heal all pain. There will be no more hurt or sorrow or bitterness or strife or anger or envy. We will be saved from the presence of all sin because of this perfect gift in Jesus Christ. And so, this perfect gift is for you and it's for me. It's not a gift for us to give to other people. It's not our gift to give. Right? Like you, you cannot save your kid. You can't save your daughter. You can't save your son. You can't save your mom or your dad. You can't save your grandparents. You can't save your best friend. You can't save your co-workers. You can't save anybody. This is not your gift to give. This is God's gift to give to you. And it's your job to receive that gift. And when you receive that gift, He invites you in on the presentation because you know the hope in Him. And so now you know this hope. You know the perfect gift that God wants to give to your daughter and your son and your mom and your dad and your grandparents and your friends and your co-workers. It's incredible. This should build a huge amount of excitement in you when you accept and receive this perfect and beautiful gift from God that will completely change your life today and tomorrow and every day for all eternity. And so, I'm going to just read how, how Joseph responds to this. Right? God lets, brings him in and gives him a message of what's going on. The Savior of the world. And how does Joseph respond? We should respond in the same way. In obedience. <clears throat> when Joseph woke up from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son. And he called his name... Jesus. So we should receive this message from God, just as Joseph did. Take it to heart, know it, 
own it, hold on to it, and believe it. Believe in Jesus, the perfect gift, this Christmas. Give your life to Him. Respond as Joseph did, in obedience. I'm going to invite the, the music team up, and, um, and I'm going to pray, and we just got a couple more songs to say, to sing, and, um, and you'll be dismissed for the evening. So come on up, team. God, I thank you so much for your Bible that you've given to us, Lord, and how we can open it and just, just read truth and have it sink in, Lord, so that it sinks into the deepest depths of our being and, the, and so, we can, so we can believe it and know it and own it, God, as our own faith in Jesus Christ. Thank you for that perfect gift, the perfect gift of eternal life presented in Christ and how he paid our penalty of death so that we could live forever in perfect relationship with you, and how that gift impacts our lives daily for all eternity. We thank you for all these things in Jesus' good name. Amen.